listening to Give God 90, where we're not afraid of the tough biblical questions, because we will dig through the language, the culture, and the history to find the truth revealed in the words of our Creator. Hello, everyone. We are live on a Monday, and thank you so much for giving us a little bit of your time today. Yes. Um, yes, I'm here. <laughs> yes, you are here. <laughs> for all the ones who, who might be new, my name is Jerry Mitchell. Sitting next to me is my wife, Myra, the only person brave enough to, to uh, try and keep me on track for the last 30 years. Tough job, but somebody's got to do it. Um, got some strange news to talk about and it kind of fits in with what we talked about on thursday we'll get into that in a second um if you are new to give god 90 we thank you for joining us uh don't don't forget for the uh folks who've been listening for a while the uh, books are still available tradition to truth and god's universe god's rules uh go check out the um give god 90.com especially the video page I have not linked, or I should say I have not put the Passover message that I did for Messianic Delaware on there yet. Not sure that's going to go there. But if you if you visit one of the um, social media accounts that I'm on, that link is there. So it's it's available for you. But if you're interested, check it out. It's not a bad message. It was actually geared more towards kids. But the older kids had way too much fun with those coloring pages. <laughs> now, when I say older kids, they were in their 40s, 50s, and 60s. We had a 79-year-old. And, okay. <clears throat> and 78? 78, 79. I'm not sure how old she is, but yeah. She they was were, they, it, they were all coloring and uh, having a good time with that. And that's the way it's supposed to be. Yes, it was. But it worked out, and... Uh, <laughs> Actually, it worked out probably better than uh, what the good Reverend Raphael Warnock tweeted this week. And I usually don't start with something like this, but I have to. Now, for those of you who are familiar with the good Reverend, he is now the junior senator from the great state of Georgia. And he kind of kind of disappointed some people. Now, for those who don't realize this, he uh, has been a pastor for quite some time, and he was uh, late, latest, I believe, that I have information for when I looked it up a while ago. Uh, he was pastor of Ebenezer Baptist Church in Atlanta prior to becoming elected senator. Hmm. <laughs> and he tweeted something yesterday. Now, yesterday being Easter for all the good Christians out there, right? Mm -hmm. And this, you might find a little disturbing if you are, uh, <laughs> well, that sounds if, a good, if you're just about anything, if you're just about anything, you will find yeah. this disturbing. Okay. <laughs> anyway, he tweeted out, the meaning of Easter is more transcendent than the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Whether you are Christian or not. Through a commitment to helping others, we are able to save ourselves. Now, I have a copy. Actually, I, I took a uh, screenshot of it so I could make sure that I get the punctuation right. Okay? Let me read that again. The meaning of Easter is more transcendent than the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Whether you are Christian or not, through a commitment to helping others, we are able to save ourselves. Apparently, uh, the good reverend and the good senator has not been properly trained in Bible. Okay, He, he doesn't not know even, his scripture. Not even in Baptist seminary. Not, not even in Baptist doctrine he's not trained. <laughs> uh, and that's kind of hard to find as a, as a Baptist preacher that's not trained Enough at, in, by, in, at Baptist least in Baptist doctrine, right? Right. <clears throat> in Isaiah 
chapter 12, verse 2, he writes, Behold, in other words, look, wow, watch what I'm saying. That is the uh, Hebrew word for hine, behold. It should be a big red, red flag, right? It's standing up there saying, I got something important here. It says, God, and I'm going to read English. God is my salvation. I will trust and not be afraid. For the Lord Jehovah is my strength and my song. He has also become my salvation. Here is the interesting thing. In Hebrew, it begins El, the generic uh, word for God, is my Yeshua. Okay, God is my salvation. All over mm-hmm. again, he, this whole concept, salvation, is salvation, God is my salvation, God is my salvation. Uh, I will trust and not be afraid for Yah, which is the short form of Yehovah. And actually, it's kind of funny because in uh, the interlinear Bible that I was looking at, very seldom does it have all the vowels when it has the yod heh hey, the Tetragrammaton, but it actually does in this particular verse. And the the <laughs> the English uh, transliteration is not Yehovah. It it says it above because if you're familiar with the way an inter, interlinear works, you have uh, typically the Strong's number, and then you'll have uh, the Hebrew, and underneath of that you will have the uh, transliterated. You know how you pronounce it, and then you'll have some other information. But the vowels were there for Yehovah. But the transliteration is Yahweh. So whoever's transliterating isn't tra- isn't reading the Hebrew. They're just taking it out of whatever they think it means. Mm-hmm. They they weren't very careful to edit their translation at that point. Or do their studying. Or on do it. their studying on. It. Yes, <laughs> <clears throat> it's, it amazes me. Anyway, he is my strength and my song. He has become my salvation. The whole concept here is that we don't do it ourselves. Even Moses, as as the Egyptian army is bearing down on them, you know, they've got the pillar of fire holding them back at the, the top of the hills or getting ready to come down. Uh, <laughs> it, it amazes me. Moses, you know, said, you know, what do I do? And he gets his instructions and he turns around to the people. He says, today you will see the salvation of God. And again, it's not we're going to save ourselves. It is going to be we are saved through the Almighty. And to tweet on Easter Sunday that we can save ourselves by someone who should be smart enough, even if he just follows straight Baptist doctrine, you don't save yourselves. No. Salvation is through uh, Yeshua, or in, in his, he writes Jesus. But even that, what we know and what Bible teaches is much deeper than that. You know, Scripture teaches us that God, the Father, is who we get salvation from. He does it through Yeshua, whose blood paid the price for our sin our messing up. We violated the covenant that was uh, ratified and certified at Mount Sinai. The blood that Yeshua shed pays that penalty. That's how we are able to have that renewed covenant. When it, it, when it is uh, certified once again at the marriage supper of the Lamb, it will be certified that it is the supreme law on this earth for the next thousand years. What happens on the next one? Well, it's still going to be the same. We just won't need it because everybody that gets there, right? Mm -hmm. That's what's going to be written on their heart. You know, this whole concept of, well, we were talking about it uh, Thursday night. Paul writes to the Galatians and he says, I don't know who's tricked you. But you know, you had the truth. You had the good news. Repent for the kingdom is at hand. The blood of Yeshua has paid the penalty. That's, that's what you need to know. And if I come and tell you something different, if somebody I send you comes and tells you something different, if an angel from heaven comes and tells you something different, don't believe it. But what did they do? They fell 
for that garbage that they were handed out, and Paul was irate. He was so irate, he starts out in chapter 3, you stupid Galatians. Mm -hmm. What do we see coming from a Baptist preacher, a U.S. senator, that we are able to save ourselves? Does that sound anything? Does it really sound? It doesn't sound anything like anything I've ever read in the Bible. It sounds like something that comes from the Satanic Temple. It sounds like something that comes from the Church of Satan. It sounds like you pick one, right? Because this is, I can do it myself. This is the ultimate replacement theology. It also sounds like he's trying to fill his pockets. Well, he is. He's a politician now, right? Exactly. I don't care what country you're from. If you're a politician... You're filling your pockets. <clears throat> you know, I said a long, long time ago that uh, being elected to a public office needs to be a terminal disease. <laughs> you don't get to spend any of the money you make. <laughs> now, getting getting to human conditioning, which is what I wanted to talk about today. You know, from the time you are born, you are being trained. You're being conditioned. You are being instructed, right? Right. Well, some of those instructions are really, really good. Now, in the United States, typically parents teach their children to talk, which should be something done worldwide, right? Right. Uh, we teach what uh, we call the ABCs, mm -hmm. right? You know, that's telling them, you know, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, how to, how to use your letters. I'm sure that, now I know in, in Hebrew, they have the Aleph Bet, which is similar. Right. More than likely, parents around the world, no matter what language they speak, if you have a written language, you're probably teaching your children how to... Use the letters, right? Right. Those are good things. We teach kids how to count. You know, we don't teach kids that two plus two is five. No. Hopefully. <laughs> we teach children that, you know, two plus two is four, and two times two is four, and three plus three is six, but three times two is six. You know, that kind of thing, right? Right. Those are good things. But we have other conditionings, just like this pastor who is writing that we can be our own salvation that aren't so good. You know, some of these teachings just don't stand up to scriptural uh, scrutiny. For instance, how many times have you heard, we well, just need to have faith? You just need to have faith. Right? Right. Well, faith in what? Right. You know, I, I, I have faith that this, uh, what I'm sitting on right now, is not going to collapse. Right. That's faith. But is that enough? You know, maybe we hear something like, you just got to believe. Well, I believe a lot of things, right? Right. I, I believe my stomach when it tells me I'm hungry, you know? I believe a dry throat when it tells me I'm thirsty, right? Right. Now, there's things I don't believe, like most politicians, no matter what country they're in. <laughs> that That's just part of not conditioning, but something we're going to get to in a second. Uh, maybe you've heard, just just take my word for it. Just take, and that's what that's what uh, Raphael Warnock's doing. Just take my word for it. We can save ourselves. Maybe you've even heard the phrase, well, they just need Jesus. They That's all they need. They just need Jesus, right? right. In my best fake Southern, some weird voice. I have heard this from from people. Well, what good is, this is going to sound funny, what good is getting Jesus if you don't have the proper application of that? Right. That's like, you know, well, you just, you just need to meet my neighbor on the other side of the house. Right? Right. Well, who's your neighbor on the other side of the house? Oh, he's Fred. What's Fred do? Well, Fred works at a hardware store. Well, at least he has a job, right? What good is it to meet somebody if you don't know what they can do for you? Is the point I'm trying to make, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. You know, all of these phrases, all of these things have become key phrases, key words for me to, to pick up on and say, we need to verify what's being said. 
Somebody tells you you need Jesus, you need to verify that their version of what they're preaching matches Scripture. Somebody tells you you just need to have faith, you need to verify that what their faith is is in the creator of the universe, right? Right. Somebody tells you you need to believe, you need to understand and verify that they're not believing in, you know, like a Coke bottle. Right. Right? Somebody says, take my word for it. I would run away from that phrase. Nobody, anybody who says, just take my word for it, they're peddling something. They're trying to sell you something. Take my word for it. <laughs> right? <laughs> okay, we looked at Paul's letter to the Galatians. And, and like I said, if, if Paul said, anybody, whether it's it's me, whether it's somebody that comes to see you, whether it is an angel, if they tell you something other than what Scripture tells you, other than that salvation comes from God through Yeshua, don't believe it. You don't believe that. Repent for the kingdom is at hand. Primary. I'm not going to get away from that. It's the first thing Yeshua taught when he came out of the wilderness. He, you know, he didn't go around convincing people right straight away, well, I'm going to die and raise in three days. He didn't even tell the disciples that. They didn't get it until after it had happened. Now, prior to, prior to all this, they were able to go do things. They were able to heal people. They were able to cast out demons. They were able to do all kinds of things before the death, burial, and resurrection. Right? Right. Why? Because they understood what the gospel was. They understood what that good news is. They realized what was happening. And there's a few places in the scripture where we have these big red flags that tell us, don't take anything for granted. Don't take this for granted. You have to understand what's going on. We can verify this in scripture, right? It's, that's what these big red flags do. Said. You know, don't let somebody sell you something that they don't own, okay? That's probably a good way to say that, too. Don't let somebody sell you something that we don't own. The Galatians, you know, after Paul left and he went on his merry way to do the other things he was doing, somebody came into the Galatians and they said, well, you don't have to do any of that. Here, this is, you, you just do this. You can save yourself. It's no big deal. You, you, you can do it yourself. All you have to do is this. You go through these steps. It'll be fine. Well, let's take a look at some of these places in the Bible that you know warn us about such things. Okay, um, <laughs> one of the places we're going to look, and I, I'm going to take this from the Holman, uh, the uh, Holman translation, because sometimes. He just hits the nail on the head, right? Um, let's look at Jeremiah 16, uh, three verses, 16 through 19. However, take note, the days are coming, the Lord's declaration, when it will no longer be said, as the Lord lives who brought the Israelites from the land of Egypt, but rather as the Lord lives, who brought the Israelites from the land of the north and from all the other lands where he had banished them. For I will return them to their land that I gave to their ancestors. I am about to send for many fishermen. This is the Lord's declaration. And they will fish for them. Then I will send for many hunters, and they will hunt them down on every mountain and hill and out of the cliffs of the rocks, for my gaze takes in all their ways. They are not concealed from me, and their guilt is not hidden from my sight. I will first repay them double their guilt in sin because they have polluted my land. They have filled my inheritance with the lifelessness of their di detestable and abhorrent idols. Lord, my strength and my stronghold, my refuge in a time of distress. The nations will come to you from the ends of the earth, and they will say, 
Our fathers inherited only lies, worthless idols of no benefit at all. Okay. Exactly what good, the good, or should my, no, are, do Baptists call themselves right reverend? No. No, okay. The reverend uh, Raphael Warnock is peddling is his lies, right? Now, this, this passage takes in a whole lot of things. When Yeshua said, I will make you fishers of men. Follow me. I'll, you, you'll fish for people. They knew exactly what he was talking about because it was prophesied in Jeremiah. They understood that. They weren't going after Gentiles. They were going after the tribes of Israel that had been scattered all over the world. Right? They understood. This was the, the uh, their, their brothers, really, and sisters, and, and all of that that had been scattered all over the world once uh, uh, Israel had been divided into two nations, right, the two houses. Mm -hmm. You had Israel and Judah. They got divided. Well, the northern tribes weren't strong enough to survive it. They, they scattered. They left. Well, they didn't leave voluntarily. They were taken away, but you know, they were dispersed. Jeremiah says there's going to be a time when people will fish for you. There's going to be a time when people will hunt for you. They're going to be looking for you. You're going to come back. And not only are you going to come back, but everybody around the world is going to watch and they're going to say, wow, our fathers have inherited lies. We've been lied to. We've been doing this wrong. Uh-oh. Sounds like something I've been saying for the last 10 years, right? Right. <laughs> um, where do you think I got it from? You think I'm smart enough to come up with this? Nope. I'm just smart enough to tell you it's here. That time is now. In verse 19, it said we were lied to. Now, if we have been lied to, we are obligated to uncover the lies and find the truth. Problem is, we have been conditioned, we have been trained to believe the lies. You know, I know that sounds crazy, but here's something worse. Our parents, our grandparents, their grandparents, their grandparents, for a long, long time, were all lied to. When you have that much that many generations, when you have that much pile on pile on pile, how do you actually go back and find what's real? Those lies were passed down and passed down and passed down until we don't know what to believe. Now, you told me something uh, some time ago that <laughs> your, your mother once told you that dinosaurs weren't real because they weren't in the Bible, right? Yeah, dinosaurs aren't real. Dinosaurs aren't real. Okay. Now, it's very easy to prove that dinosaurs are real. But because she didn't know how to explain that to you, she couldn't justify, you know, these these huge animals on Noah's Ark, probably. She didn't know how to do that. She just told you, well, they're not real. Because somebody had told her they weren't on the Ark. They're not real. They didn't survive. They're not real. Somebody probably told the person that told that person. Well, this can't be. Now, that couldn't go back very far because uh, the word dinosaur only uh, began to appear in the mid-1800s. Prior to that, they had a different name for them. They were called dragons, which does appear in the Bible. <laughs> yes, fire-breathing dragons are in the Bible. It's in Job. I can prove it to you. I can find it and read it for you. I know. Um, but they don't, you know, many people didn't believe that either. Mm -mm. Oh, it can't be. No. It just can't be. You see, some of these things are innocent. They don't intend to harm, but they do harm. There is a, a huge group of Christian pastors, uh, that are mostly, uh, found in Great Britain who attempt to bring evolution into creation. They say, of course God could use millions of years. It's, it's no trouble. 
Well, the strange thing was, in Great Britain, just a couple of hundred, well, a few hundred years ago now, Martin Luther was, was battling the opposite problem. People in, in Great Britain a few hundred years ago were saying, well, all God had to do was just speak, and it could all happen at once. Well, it could have, but it didn't. And finally, Martin Luther had to say, look, you know, just give the Holy Spirit the uh, credit for being wise enough to tell us how it really happened. <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. And that is what we have through Moses in the Bible today. You know, that seven day create or six day creation period and a day of rest. It has lasted for a long time, like 6,000 years, not 14 billion years. I could go down that rabbit hole a long way. But these are innocent things. What about the things that aren't so innocent like Pastor Warnock, right? We can save ourselves. No, we can't. You know, the reason Paul was upset with the Galatians is they had told... You know, Paul had gone there and he said, look, Salvation comes through God. We can see that in Scripture. Here it is in Isaiah. You've witnessed, basically in your lifetime, at, as he was writing to the Galatians, that Yeshua was crucified as a criminal. And here's how that happened. Here's what was going on. If somebody tells you something different, don't believe it. Somebody came along and they said, well, you silly Galatians. That's not all you have to do. You have to obey, uh, of course you have to obey the Torah, but you also have to obey our rules. And it's really kind of hard the way most English translations are written, and it's really kind of difficult in the Greek. You've got to understand which laws Paul is speaking about and when. Because they really do don't distinguish sometimes between what Torah law is and what Pharisaical law is and what civil law was at the time, right? Right. If you, don't, if you take just one verse, it's easy to figure and think, oh, I don't have to do that anymore. But if you take it in context and you read the whole thing that he's saying... And you actually sit down and you say, well, we know that, that this was part of Torah. And you, you keep that straight. And you know that this was part of the civil law. And you keep that straight. And then you take part of what was pharisaical rules and regulations. And you keep those things straight. It's pretty easy to know and understand what Paul was talking about. Now, he says in his letter to Galatians, and if you read Stern's uh, Complete Jewish Bible, he, he makes it plain right there. And he does a really good job of translating it. Paul says, look, I was practicing Judaism and the way we were practicing it wasn't right. Right? Traditional mm -hmm. Judaism is, is the phrase they use there. He says, that wasn't getting it because we had too many rules and regulations that were man-made. The, the thing about man-made regulations is they don't get you anywhere. They're worthless. They're completely empty. Things like washing your hands uh, uh, ritualistically I almost said ceremoniously, but actually it's more ritualistically. Before you eat bread, there's nothing. Moses didn't write anything about that. That's all man-made rules. When Paul found out that they had slipped back into that, he was furious, and he had a right to be furious. You know, today, you know, we have pastors out there teaching, well, if you want to go to heaven when you die, you have to you know, fill in the blank for whatever denomination you're in, right? Because every one of them seems to be different. Well, nowhere, okay, here's a warning for all you Christian pastors out there. Nowhere in the Bible, nowhere in the Bible, let me say this again, nowhere in the Bible does it talk about going to heaven for all of us, okay? There's a few people who get to go to the throne room, but they don't stay there. Well, the 24 elders do. But the rest of us come back because earth was made for man. Got that? 
Stop trying to convince people that if you want to go to heaven, they have to follow your man-made rules and regulations. It will not bode well for you when you stand at the foot of the throne of judgment. <clears throat> now that I have that off my chest, <sighs> you know, we're warned over and over in Scripture about people lying to us. David in the Psalms, you know, you just look up how many times he, he says, God, you got to help me with this. People are lying about me. People are lying to me. People are giving me bad advice. I need your guidance. Uh, Peter, in his second letter, he actually addresses this as well. If you want to read 2 Peter 3, 1 through 7. My friends, this is the second letter I have written to you. I wrote both letters to you to help your honest minds remember something. I want you to remember the words that the Holy Prophet spoke in the past. And remember the command that our Lord and Savior gave us through your apostles. It is important for you to understand what, I, what will happen in the last days. People will laugh at you. They will live doing the evil things they want to do. They will say, Jesus promised to come again. Where is he? Our fathers have died. But the world continues the way it has been since it was made. But they do not want to remember what happened long ago. God spoke and made heaven and earth. He made the earth from water and with water. Then the world was flooded and destroyed with water. And that same word of God is keeping heaven and earth that we know now. They are being kept to be destroyed by fire. They are being kept for the judgment day and the destruction of all who are against God. Ooh. It, Peter says, there's going to be people who laugh at you for believing in the creator of the universe. They're going to say, well, he told us he was coming right back. Where is he? There will be people who say, well, no loving God would, would create a virus that, that just kills people. Right? Right. Heard it all. They're, they're going to try and convince you that what you believe in, what you can see because it has been revealed to you, isn't real. But they're living in a fantasy world. <laughs> there is no way... I almost said there's no way on God's green earth. <laughs> but there is no way on God's green earth that what you can go outside and look around and see happened because 14 billion years ago, nothing exploded. And that's the way they explain the beginning. Nothing exploded. It began 6,000 years ago when the Almighty spoke and it's, it started something... I don't know how long he'd been thinking about it. I don't know how long he'd been designing the blueprints. But about 6,000 years ago now, he spoke. And what you see is what and who you are is a result of him speaking. That is a whole lot easier for me to believe than nothing exploded. <laughs> right? Right. You know, it, it's it. If I don't have anything, let me let me put it this way: If you have zero money in the bank, can it explode? If you have zero money in the bank, what can you buy? If you have zero money in the bank, are you going to be hungry? Yeah, yeah, you are. If you have, so nothing can explode. Peter tells them to remember their real history. Peter tells them to remember, you have to understand what has happened in the past to understand what's happening now and what's going to happen in the future. Peter's telling them to understand real history because if you don't understand real history, you might not be around to have the chance to do it all over again. 
Let that sink in for a moment. Yeshua himself warns us about believing the lies that are found in the Bible. Matthew 24, 4 through 14. Jesus answered, Be careful that no one fools you. Many people will come in my name. They will say, I am the Christ, and they will fool many people. You will hear about wars and stories of wars that are coming, but don't be afraid. These things must happen before the end comes. Nations will fight against other nations. Kingdoms will fight against other kingdoms. There will be times when there is no food for people to eat, and there will be earthquakes in different places. These things are like the first pains when something new is about to be born. Then men will arrest you and hand you over to be hurt and kill you. They will hate you because you believe in me. At that time, many who believe will lose their faith. They will turn against each other and hate each other. Many false prophets will come and cause many people to believe false things. There will be more and more evil in the world. So most people will stop showing their love for each other. But the person who continues to be strong until the end will be saved. The good news about God's kingdom will be preached in the world to every nation. Then the end will come. Okay. Now, some of these things we have seen for, well, throughout the history of the world, right? Some of these things have been going on. Some of them have absolutely increased over the last few years. Some of these things have uh, really began to develop around the world more quickly in the last several months. Now, I'm not preaching end times here, not at all. What I'm saying is if you are wise enough to read this for what it says, things are about to change. I'm not sure when that change is going to occur or what it's going to look like, but things are about to change. But Yeshua is telling us, people are going to come and they're going to lie to you. I, I read the quote from the pastor senator earlier where he said, we can save ourselves. You can watch the news and you can see that, be, well, in the United States, especially beginning last summer, People not loving each other, people hating each other. And it begins based on, or that began based on race. This year, it is going to be based on income. Just watch and see what happens next in the United States. In other nations, it's based on where you live, what your family name is. In some nations, it's simply based on uh, where where you were born has more to do with it than your name or where you might live now. There are problems in every nation around the world where people are just mean to each other for really no reason. People are lying to each other. You have people that we should be able to, to look up to. You know, here is a pastor and a U.S. senator. You should be able to look up to these folks, and they are lying to you. They are telling you something that is not true. And I doubt that was the first lie he ever told. There is a reason I say that, but I won't go there. When somebody tries to convince you that the law of God has been done away with, tell them it's man's law that was done away with. It's man's law that was nailed to the cross, and it, you know, it's civil law that we have to get along with each other. It's civil law that tells us, you know, I can't... Uh, go out and take my car and run 100 miles an hour down a city street where the speed limit's 25, right? Right. That's civil law. 
religious law depends on the denomination you happen to find yourself in. Because there's, there's some denominations that say you can't dance. There's some denominations that say you can't listen to rock and roll music. There's some denominations that say, oh, you shouldn't go to the movies. Well, I say you don't, shouldn't go to the movies, but that's for a completely different reason. You know, I just don't want to pay big money to watch these weirdo celebrities spread their pedal and sell their garbage. That's another story. Let me say this to the people who want to talk about being legalistic. You will never, ever be condemned by the creator of the universe for following his instructions. The only people that will condemn you for following his instructions are the people of this world. That's it. There is no way in, there is no way he will ever condemn you for doing the things he asks you to do. There is no way he will ever condemn you for living the life he designed you to live. There is no way he will ever condemn you for trusting completely in him. There's no way that following the Creator's instructions will harm you from him. You might get your feelings hurt here from people, and some of those people you might care deeply for. You might get your feelings hurt from people who laugh at you. You know, we just read that from Peter. You're going to get laughed at. You might get your feelings hurt for other reasons. You know, Yeshua said you might go to jail or worse. But you will never find yourself condemned from the creator of the universe, the one who's going to have that final judgment. If you live the way he designed you to live, if you follow his instructions, if you do things his way to improve your life, you will never have his condemnation. You might have a few rewards coming your way. You might have several rewards coming your way. In fact, in this particular world, you might find some blessings in that as well. When people try to peddle their own beliefs and their own religious systems, when people try to sell you something that is not real, you need to verify it. It's up to you. It was up to our fathers who inherited lies from their fathers, who inherited lies from their fathers. And now we have to uncover the truth, not just because it's the right thing to do, because we're running out of time. All you need to do to see that is watch, you know, watch your local news, watch the national news, watch the world news, and I can guarantee you, you will see the things being talked about in Scripture, you know, on your computer screen, on your television, wherever you get your news, on radio, in podcasts, it's there all the time. It's in your face. You can't hide from it unless you're trying to hide from it. Do yourself a favor. Live the way you were designed to live. Be the person that the Almighty designed you to be. Not the person that, you know, some half-baked, strange, elected... I wasn't going to go there. I'm not going there. I'm running out of time. I want to. Do... I don't want to leave that there today. Just live the way you're designed to live. It'll be a whole lot better for you and the people around you. Yes, it will. Did you have anything else you wanted to add to that? Have a blessed day, everyone. <laughs> yes, everybody. We certainly do appreciate it. If you want to help us out, share this. Your friends need to hear it. Your family needs to hear it. And your enemies need to hear it, too. Until Thursday, have a blessed, blessed week. Bye, everyone. Oh, my God.